What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and it looks like Sasha Baron Cohen is getting totally awesome praise online for doing a totally unique and stunning and brave thing that I'm sure you will agree is stunning and brave. Look, I really enjoyed Sasha Baron Cohen for a long time. Now, his recent uh, films seem uninspired to me and unfunny. But the guy's doing work. He's making more money than I ever will. And maybe I'm just not the audience. I mean, certainly him doing a voice over job in Madagascar is not for me. But uh, I used to watch the Ali G show like crazy on HBO. Obviously, um, Borat, unbelievable, just uh, in every way possible, uh, you know, an equal opportunity offender, too. But he was also in some terrible movies like Hugo. His role in Talladega Nights was okay. Um, I thought Bruno, nah, The Dictator, eh. Like both films have their moments, obviously. You know, they have their moments. But for the most part, he was never really able to recapture uh, the Ali G show, which is what really made him popular, and then Borat. Now, I'm not saying, like I said, that there's nothing valuable in these films, but this is also a guy that now in his older age has gone on to disavow many of his old spicy jokes. I mean, Borat literally sings throw the Jew down the well. I mean, this is uh, Sasha Baron Cohen himself is Jewish, but he's still making a joke as he would call it nowadays. That's a spicy R word type joke. But today, because, you know, the media is desperate for any headline that they can uh, own drumf with. The Hill ran an article saying Sasha Baron Cohen joins Twitter as Borat to mock Trump. And the the replies are exactly what you would expect. Hilarious. How brave of him to do exactly what all the mainstream media and Hollywood have been doing for the past four years. Great. I mean, yeah. Wow. Earth shattering stuff. Time to go eat lunch. Borat came out when I was young and I loved it. It shows me how stupid I was when I was young. I still think Borat holds up if you've never seen it. Um, and and the meme here is, you know, we've got some election interference here from Kazakhstan and it must be investigated. Um, you know, I, I think. Imagine how this world would be better if there were no celebrities, just pretenders that make entertainment and move on without people actually caring about their personal lives and political views. A lot more people would start thinking for themselves. I mean, most most every reply in this thread is just roasting him. Um, yeah, I like when he mocks poor village people. Hashtag progressive, another socialist, another wealthy socialist. So brave. I mean, all the way down here, desperate, brave. I mean, this is a guy uh, who also said social media is the greatest propaganda machine in history. Uh, he wants regulation and legislation. Uh, this is what he said during a speech at the ADL um, and said, quote, yes, yeah, some of my comedy. OK, probably half of my comedy has been absolutely juvenile and the other half completely puerile. He said, I'm just a comedian and actor, right? He doesn't have to hold himself to the same standard that he wants everyone else to live by. Uh, I'm just a comedian and actor, not a scholar. But one thing is pretty clear to me. All this bad stuff is being facilitated by a handful of Internet companies that amount to the greatest propaganda machine in history. Quote, think about it. Facebook, YouTube, Google, Twitter, and others, they reach billions of people. The algorithms these platforms depend on deliberately amplify this type of content that keeps users engaged, stories that appeal to our baser instincts, and that triggers outrage and fear. Baron Cohen said, adding that it's time for a fundamental rethink of social media and how it spreads bad opinions, conspiracy, and lies. In his speech, Baron Cohen pointed to recent remarks from Facebook CEO Zuckerberg warning of the dangers of regulating free expression on the Internet. Um, he goes, some of these arguments are simply absurd. Baron Cohen says, yeah, pro-censorship spot. There will always be people who have bad opinions that we agree with. I think we could all agree that we should not be giving bad people a free platform to amplify their views and target their victims. 
Zuckerberg seems to equate regulation of companies like this to actions of the most repressive societies. Incredible. This from one of the six people to decide what information so much of the world sees. Zuckerberg at Facebook, Sundar, at Sundar Pichai, at Google, its parent company, Alphabet, Larry Page, and Sergey Brin, Brin's ex-sister-in-law, Susan Wojcicki, at YouTube, and Jack Dorsey at Twitter. The Silicon Six, all billionaires, all Americans, all who care more about boosting their share price than protecting democracy. Baron Cohen said, likening their reign on internet information, ideological imperialism. Now, I don't necessarily disagree with his opinion of the power that these six people have. Uh, I, in fact, we're basically on the same boat that I do worry about how much power these six people have and how much... Um, you know, how much uh, uh, influence they have. The problem is, especially when you're talking about a company like the ADL, which is a joke, um, you have uh, different definitions of truth. It's like truth TM. And what Sasha Baron Cohen probably wants is truth TM, which is the mainstream media opinion. Finally, Bear Cohen concluded his, spe concluded his speech by telling the room, if we make that our aim, if we prioritize truth over lies, tolerance over prejudice, empathy over indifference, and experts over ignoramuses, then maybe, just maybe, we can stop the greatest propaganda machine in history. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't believe that he really understands the stuff he's asking for here. Uh, but you have The Hill here covering this, saying, Sasha Baron Cohen has joined Twitter as Bull Rat, the character centered of his comedy films of the same name, and has fired off a number of tweets poking fun at President Trump. The new Twitter account comes a few weeks after the trailer for Bull Rat 2, the sequel to his 2006 film. Yeah, it was just a thing he thought of, except it's already verified. Uh... Now, under his name, Cohen has had a number of tweets jabbing at Trump's handling and blah, blah, blah. So stunning, much brave. I mean, uh, I get, I mean, it's great jokes. I mean, funny, I suppose. But it's basically run-of-the-mill TDS stuff. Um, you know, Premier Trump, true leader, he, he, uh, he have proved himself stronger than more than 200,000 of his American subjects. I mean, yeah. It's funny, especially if you have uh, TDS. Um, the secure, satirical Twitter swipes Trump come as member of his administration are expected to be featured in the new Borat film. The trailer center around Borat's efforts to marry his daughter off and give someone close to the throne, uh, apparently referring to Vice President Mike Pence. The trailer ends with Baron Cohen in an elaborate Trump disguise storming into the conservative, conservative political action conference, CPAC, as Pence is speaking while holding his co-star over his shoulder. Michael, Pe Michael Pence, I've brought a girl for you, he yells from the CPAC crowd. Others close to Trump, including a personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, are listed on IMDb as appearing in the film. I'm sure. I mean, look, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, I think, used to poke fun at both sides, but now it's pretty obvious that he's just picked a side. Um, he's entitled to do that. Um, he also had that where he there was some rally that he infiltrated and everyone called him stunning and brave. Look, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen is basically just another Hollywood uh, blowhard at this point looking to maintain relevance. Maybe Bo Rat 2 will be a great success. I doubt it. Um, but uh, yeah, stunning and brave Sasha Baron Cohen has made a Twitter account to appeal to far left idiots on Twitter. Smart move. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.